Now these are some of the easiest formulas in this whole class. This is the only time where I'll actually have you calculate a standard deviation because the formula is so easy. So for the mean for a binomial random variable, it's just n times p. Again, where n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success on any one of the, the n trials. So the mean is n times p. The mean, since we're talking about a discrete probability distribution, the mean is the same as the expected value. So this is the mean, it's also the expected value. For the standard deviation, you take the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. Let's go back to our example dealing with car owning households. If we have a simple random sample of 400 car owning households, determine the mean and standard deviation for the number of car owning households that will have three or more cars. So in this one, we do have a binomial experiment. In this one, our sample size is the same as our number of trials. So our n is equal to 400. And again, we're going to define success as the household having three or more cars. Our probability of success on any one trial is 0.35. So we can calculate the mean or the expected value for this distribution. It's just n times p or 400 times 0.35 and that gives us 140. Now this is the same as the expected value so in any group of 400 households, we would expect that about 140 of them would own three or more cars. Now that's a little bit misleading because if we picked out several different samples of 400 households, that doesn't mean that necessarily any of them would have exactly 140 successes. Remember that expected value really is talking about the long run. So what this would, so a little bit more accurate interpretation of this would be if we selected a large number of simple random samples of 400 households. Say if we selected a thousand different samples of 400 households and looked at the number of successes in each one of those 1,000 samples, the average number of successes we would expect to be 140. So that's really what this is talking about. Our standard deviation, again this is an easy, easy formula. All we have to do is take the square root of n times p times 1 minus p and that gives us 9.5. So if we're thinking about mean and standard deviation, we've got a mean of 140 and a standard deviation of 9.5. Now let's look a little bit more at binomial distributions and the mean and standard deviation. If we look at probability histograms for binomial distributions, we can see that the shape of the distribution depends on the number of trials n and the value of p. So in this picture we have a, binom a binomial distribution where we have 30 trials. Our probability of success p is 0.35. So you can see in this picture that the distribution is skewed to the right a little bit because there's a longer tail on the right side and more of the data is actually on the left. So our mean for this distribution is 10.5 and that again is not exactly in the middle between 0 and 30 but it's a little bit to the left of the center. And our standard deviation is 2.61. Now if we have the same number of trials, so if we have 30 trials but our probability of success is 0.5, then we have a symmetric distribution. Notice that the mean for this distribution is 15, which is exactly halfway between 0 and 30. So this distribution shape is symmetric 
and it has somewhat of a bell shape. Our mean is 15 and our standard deviation here is 2.74. Now finally, if we change our probability of success to 0.9, look what it does to our distribution picture. In this picture, our distribution is very much skewed to the left. Notice that there's a tail out on the left side, and most of our data is centered here on the right. Our mean for this distribution is 27, so it's clear over here on the right end. And our standard deviation is 1.64 because actually in this case, our, the bulk of our data is closer together and is closer to the mean than it was in either of these two pictures. So our standard deviation is a little bit smaller. Now, what if instead of changing the value of P, we change the value of N? Let's look at three pictures with different N values. So here we've got a probability of success of 0.35 and our sample size or our number of trials is only 5. So our possible values of x only go between 0 and 5. And notice what our distribution looks like. Again we can see that it's skewed a little bit to the right because we have a longer tail over here. Our mean is 1.75 so it's pretty close to the 2 which has the highest probability value and our standard deviation is 1.07. In this picture we still have p equal to 0.35 but our number of trials is 30. So notice how this distribution is more spread out because our possible values of x go from 0 to 30. Our mean here is 10.5 which again is a little bit to the left of our middle point between 0 and 30. And our standard deviation is 2.61. So actually this distribution has a little bit more variation than this one did if we're just comparing standard deviations. Now finally let's look at the same probability of success with 100 trials. Now this one has even more of a bell-shaped type distribution. All this, although this is still going to be skewed to the right because our p-value is 0.35. But you can see as we increase the number of trials that this is starting to look more and more like a bell-shaped distribution. And remember when we're calculating this mean, the mean for a binomial distribution is just n times p. So as we increase our number of trials, then our mean is going to increase. So it went here from 1.75, which is, is a little bit to the left of the middle of this graph. Here it's 10.5, which is again is a little bit to the left of the center of the graph. And here it's 35, which is also a little bit to the left of the center of this graph, which would be 50.